Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Sandy. We're host of Wines Defined, a podcast and now a YouTube channel. That's right. And if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also, if you like podcasts, check out our Wines Defined podcast. That can be found mm -hmm. on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Buzzsprout, pretty much anywhere, anywhere. Mm -hmm. that you listen to podcasts. And what else do we like for them to do? And give us a five-star review on iTunes. If you do hop on over and listen to that podcast, we'd appreciate it. And give us a thumbs up on this and add any comments that you would like about new wines that you would like for us to venture out and taste because we are all about testing out the wine so that you will know what to do next. That's right. And follow us on Instagram. Oh, yes. We and do, Instagram. On Instagram, mm -hmm. we do some fun live stuff. We interact with followers. Mm -hmm. We have a special from the inbox, from the crew mail segment that we've added to the podcast. Mm -hmm. So we take your questions and thoughts and we answer them in the podcast. We do. Okay. So today's wine is what? It's, it's one of those you can't pronounce. Good. <laughs> it's a um, Cote de Rhone, which means um, slope, and it's in Rhone, mm -hmm. so that is in France, and it's actually from southern France, and it is from the Castilis, which is a the producer. Yes, and the fun fact about the producer is that um, it is from a cooperative winery. And back way back in 1956, mm -hmm. the growers and the winemakers in this area came together and created. Um, several cooperative wineries, including this one, to maximize the growing region and to feature the terroir of yes. that particular growing area. And, and, and that um, model has really served them well. It has, and it's helped with that AOC that they have. Right. I'm going to go ahead and also show you how to open this bottle of wine. But what are we doing also? The other oh, part of this video what? is... Lots of fun gadgets to open a bottle of wine. Oh, yes, so, yes. Okay, yeah. so let's see. We have, this is a cool little gadget. It's, it's mechanical. You put your, um, put it on top of the bottle. You hit the button. It does it all by itself, and it'll... My husband calls that my wine lightsaber. But before <laughs> you even do that, this is a major lifesaver. This is one of those um, yeah. wine um, seal peel peelers. Mm -hmm. That's probably not the technical term. It's not. It's a peely thing. It's a peely thing. That's what we call it. Uh, but you take it... Yeah, don't do that. I'm going to show them how to do it the other okay. way. Okay, so if you, you were not doing it the way that we've selected to open... There's like a million and five ways mm -hmm. to open a bottle of wine. We have a certain way that we're going to do it, mm -hmm. but these are multiple ways that you can. Right. But if you were going to use a, um, a, a corkscrew or, or the, the wine wand, um, you would want to remove this seal. To the foil. The foil. So you, so get you have the, the opening cork. so that you can get, yes, to the cork. You could do it without it, but it just makes it nice and neat. So neater. this is one of those this butterflies. Is, this is called a butterfly um, opener, and you basically put it on top, hold it, and then you start twisting, and the little and the arms go up, 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 and then whenever it's to the top, then you pull up, Pop and then it pops it out. That's right. And, and that's so this the, is the butterfly, and you would use that in conjunction with the foil remover. Yes, as well. and I usually the trick for these is once I once I have it in, then I have to sometimes screw it a couple more times and even go in a little bit more. Yeah, but once just you never, get, yeah, yeah. just never does the, the first, first time. time. Okay, then you also have the traditional waiter's um, um, key. There are two different kinds. I recommend this kind, and I'll show you why. The first kind is just, just a basic key. It has the bottle opener, a corkscrew, and then it also has the little... To, to it has a little knife. Little it has a little, like knife. A, like a little Swiss Army knife. Yeah, like a little Swiss Army knife. Yeah. This one is good in a pinch, but I actually prefer this one because it has an extra little lever here that you can use. It's all about the leverage. Then you also have the corkscrew here, and it also has a little blade. There we go. So. I'll show you why this is needed. So what you do is you take and you open, you slice it all the way around, now, I'm not a psalm, so I've heard read where, you, oh, you're not supposed to move the bottle, all that good fancy stuff, but this is how I do it. So I take the foil off, and you close it back. Almost there. We're almost, almost there. to that glass of wine. <laughs> then the corkscrew, what you're going to do is you try to get it into the center of 
That's very before. important with any okay. of these. I have to stand up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot see it. I'm short. <laughs> so I put it straight in the center, and then I put a little leverage, and then you just peel it on in there. Screw it in. Then you, yeah, keep twisting. Now this is where the lever comes in handy. You can start off, oh, I think I have it up one too many. You start off up high. Oops. Oh no, and I'm on camera. <laughs> That's why we use the wine wand. <laughs> there, I was just getting too excited. Then you lever up. And just peel it right And then you can even, oh. yeah. And, you know, um, we, we make a big deal about that loud pop noise and how exciting and fun it is. It's, it's actually not. It's not. It should it's not cook. It should it go, should quietly. go quietly. That's Which the that did not. That had That's because noise. I'm on TV and I'm, I'm nervous. nervous. I did. <laughs> and because we're ready to have a glass of wine. So oh. we're going to, um, now that we've shown you guys some really cool different gadgets for opening wine, we're going to taste the wine that we've opened. And again, this wine is from France. It is uh, for the, from the Cote de Rhone. It is a white blend, and, and a lot of French wines are blends. And this particular blend is 50% Grenache Blanc, 30% Roussan, and 20% Claret. And Claret's a wine of great. We have not, not had that. Not we have not had that. the varietal. Right. Um, but we have had Roussan, and we do, we do really like enjoy Roussan. the Roussan. Mm -hmm. um, and this wine actually is the 2017, 2016 Cote de Rhone. Mm -hmm. um, La Via Neron du Castellas, and it was rated at 90 points um, by wine, mm -hmm. uh, wine enthusiast. The wine enthusiast. Wine enthusiast, okay. yes. And it smells of pink grapefruit, white fruits, white blossoms. Um, it has some... It does. Some floral notes to it as well. And it's very aromatic. It is very aromatic. Smell a lot of white flowers and peaches, just like the notes say. It's doing what it says. A little bit of pear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smells wonderful. I wish you guys could smell it. I know. I know. We'll invent that after. The color, sure the color very is light. very light, but it still has a good bit of yellow, I think. It does. It does. And I'm excited. It's a medium plus in the body, so I'm mm. very excited to, to try that. To see what it's like. And um, the notes say it has a long finish, and that's something that you enjoy. I do. So I'm, I, I do. have high hopes for this one. So and cheers. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> At the same time, um, it has some nice little acidity. It does have nice acidity. It. Um, it it, I can see the body. It's me. It definitely is medium, but mm -hmm. full body. Actually, one note said full bodied. I'd say medium, but medium plus. So it's on the higher end for a white. Um, it. It's very nice. It has those floral. It, it's. It almost smells like it tastes, or it tastes like it smells. Mm -hmm. um, but very true to the nose. It is very true to the nose. It's but it, it's not oaky. It does have I think twenty five percent French oak. Yes. But it doesn't doesn't have that. It, it does it, not have that. So even though it says it has new oak in it, it's not that overwhelming. But it provides that roundness that I think helps well, with the body. Also, was it sat on its leaves for six to eight months, and that okay. helps with the complexity and the depth of of body. To Tell it. people what sitting on its leaves means. Well, that means that it sits on yeast on its mm -hmm. yeast, um, and that that helps to uh, Round. bring out the 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 the. Um, when wine is really thin, it is less body that's or, or light bodied, and the sitting on its leaves helps add to that more full, complex body mm -hmm. to it. So yeah, um, and this was six to eight months, and and that's something with a white wine we tend to find that we enjoy, is to have a little bit more body to it, but it's still light and refreshing too. It is. is so it's a very nice wine, and it is from. The Southern Rhone, which is an appellation that has been around for a very long time. It actually originally started mm -hmm. back in the 1500s yes. with the Pope whenever he said that he made all the cast be insignated. Well, with... it was the king. It was, oh, it was 17, the king. It was, it was actually 1737, and the king, of, okay. the current king of France at that time, was uh, the wine in this area was very popular. And in Rhone, there, there's a right bank and a left bank, which in a lot of the growing regions, that's how they, they do, yeah. in France. And the right bank area of this area 
was very preferable to the kings and the papists at the time. Mm -hmm. And so the king, in order to guarantee that it was coming from that area, wanted all of the barrels from that area to be stamped with CDU. Right, the, uh, right, the initials. Right, so, and that is actually the precursor to the whole notion of the Appalachians, which right. now are nationwide They kind of started, right. they, that's their starting of it. And these, whenever you get from a certain area, the, the insignia here is also indicative of that growing area. And just like we did a video for Travel, Travel, mm -hmm. and Travel is also in sub in the Rhone region, mm -hmm. and it has the T on it. So you'll see it has that on the wine bottles. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very interesting how once you start decoding these labels, there's, there's what, so much information, and it's just mind blowing how it, how, it is. How and much. then the other thing about this, when I was doing some research that I'd like to share, mm -hmm. is that there's different levels of um, of quality of the wines. You have the basic Cote de Rhone, then mm -hmm. you have Cote de Rhone village, then you have yes. Cote de Rhone, the name of the specific village that it came from. So I don't even, can't even give you one at the moment. And then mm -hmm. you have Cote de Rhone Cuvée, which is the premium. So you have four mm -hmm. separate levels of designations, designations for, on quality of the production of the wine. Right, and so, you, you know, you can go and get a Cote mm -hmm. de Rhone and certainly be in the ballpark, but if you want to really hone your knowledge yeah. and, and get more specific, then you would be looking for those different um, sub-tiers. Right, yes, yes. If that's the proper word for it, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're calling it. Tiers, that's right. <laughs> so anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video. Quick little tour into the Cote de Rhone and a little mm -hmm. bit of information on how to open a bottle of wine because that's, you know, yeah. important. So, yeah, so, so far you've learned how to open a bottle of wine, learned a little bit about the um, growing region, growing and, the region history. and the history of it, and we hope you enjoyed that. Yes, and we hope that you'll check out the podcast and that you'll join us next time on, on Wines to Find. find.